Colonel Kaufman, you talk uh, so much about Mission Command, uh, about the brigade, and how very much you're passionate about it. What is it that you can elaborate regarding Mission Command? Mission Command is a fascinating topic. Um, there's lots of discussion. There's PowerPoint slides. There's there's articles. There's writing. We we we've got incredible doctrine out there on Mission Command. Um, for me, I think that we are further as an army on this subject than we've ever been. We fully embrace it. We talk about it constantly. But one thing that I, I don't find uh, as I look through readings and, and hear discussions is how is that really executed at the company level, battalion level, and brigade level? It, not that we want a how-to manual, uh, because that might be counter to our whole mission command doctrine, but we need some helpful tools for young company commanders to use uh, so they can emplace mission command, so they can understand it how, and explain it to their subordinates. Is there a problem with mission command throughout the Army, sir? I don't know if there's a problem, but there sure is a perception. Uh, as I talk to young leaders, and the perception is that while deployed, team leaders and squad leaders, platoon leaders and company commanders feel they had a whole bunch more authority than they do when they get back home. But I don't find that to be the truth. What I find to be true is there's a lot to do back at home and that we need to do a better job of explaining those authorities and giving young leaders the opportunity to lead their formations uh, through a myriad of experiences. Uh, to enable Mission Command. Because as we execute Mission Command back here in peace is what we are going to do when we deploy to war. How do you hold uh, those accountable in terms of the implementation of Mission Command? Well, there's several ways. Now, so let's, let's talk about what I, I feel are the components or the triad of Mission Command. At the company, battalion, and brigade level, my belief is that there are three components of mission command that have to be set, talked about, and enabled by perfect clarity across the formation. The first is the authorities. What are the authorities at the team leader, squad leader, platoon leader, company commander, battalion, and even mine? What are my authorities and what have I delegated down? Uh, once those are clearly understood, then we can let the subordinate leaders move out towards the objective. And we will get further and further than we ever thought possible because through discipline initiative, our subordinate leaders are going to execute. The second is we really need to hold people accountable. So once we've established the authorities, we need to hold those leaders accountable for what we've said they're responsible for. And if they're not, uh, achieving what we want them to achieve, we need to tell them. And then third is leader development. We need to develop our leaders to execute within their authorities, how to hold others accountable, and really how to take their warrior tasks and drills, their MOS proficiency, and their leadership capabilities, and accomplish the missions that we've set before them. Sir, if you had to talk about Mission Command uh, and its authorities, accountability, leader development, in its simplest terms, what would it be? As far as uh, accountability, it's looking another person in the eye and telling them they are absolutely doing the right thing or they're absolutely not meeting your intent or a standard. When we talk about authorities, it's clearly articulating what subordinate leaders can make decisions on and what they can't make decisions on that requires a higher level of leader to be included in that decision. And as far as leader development, it's preparing leaders across a myriad of areas to accomplish their wartime mission and lead their subordinates every day so that they can get better, accomplish the mission, and take care of one another in combat. All right, sir. At this point, I'd like to go a little bit more in-depth on authority. Now, how do you, as a brigade commander, articulate your, your subordinates' authority uh, via mission command? So, I really look at three things. I mean, from squad leader all the way up to the force comm commander, our primary responsibility to the American people is readiness. That's equipment readiness, personnel readiness, and training readiness. So 
at echelon, that's what they're responsible for. So that is their authority. Individual training. Equipment, you know, all of our kit, getting them ready to go, and making sure our people are deployable. Right? That, at the squad leader, team leader, platoon leader level, is the essence of their authority and responsibility. The company commander's putting it all together, and the battalion commander as well. And then I'm overall responsible for the readiness within the brigade. So when people say, well, what are my authorities? Look no further than your responsibility to the American people to make sure that we have a trained and ready force within your capabilities. So is your equipment ready to go? Are your people ready to go? And finally, have they been trained on what the tasks they are going to be asked to do in combat by their nation? Okay, sir, now that we understand a little bit about how authority works, how is it that the Army is holding folks accountable so we certify two levels down. So as a brigade commander, I'm responsible to certify my company commanders. Battalion commanders certify platoons and platoon leaders, and so on and so forth, all the way down to the individual. So that's the first part of uh, accountability. The other piece of accountability is we counsel. We look another person in the eye. We tell them they are or are not doing a great job, how we would like for them to improve, and we hold them accountable. We also have evaluations. So we hold people accountable for their actions through the NCOERs, their OERs, and, and that's all tied together uh, with certifying two levels down and training one level down. Now we've talked about accountability and we've talked about authority. Leader development, I'm sure it must be a, a complex process to get to that uh, ultimate goal. How do you go about leader development for your subordinates? Leader development is probably the most important thing that we can do for the future of our Army. It's to develop those leaders to carry the mantle of leadership into the next combat zone, into the next fight, and fight and win our nation's wars. We develop leaders today for success tomorrow. But really, I mean, the Army does a great job of laying this out for us. Okay, it starts with self-development, experience, education, and training. That's really the essence of leader development. And I'd say that, you know, as I explained to my company commanders, number one, we have to establish a common understanding and vision because we want adaptive leaders, critical thinkers, and warfighting experts. We use our tradition history to bring up the next generation so they understand where we've come from and where we're going. We have an elaborate mentorship program in the Army. We counsel individuals and we coach them. And ultimately, it's our responsibility to certify those leaders as discussed in the accountability portion. And that is how I believe leadership, leader development uh, occurs in our Army. But there's one component that is more important than any of that, and that's trust. As a subordinate leader, you have my trust. You don't have to earn it. I give it to you freely. And I must earn yours every day. I earn yours by developing you as a leader, showing that you uh, I uphold standards and discipline, and that I care about this organization more than I care about myself. Sir, is there any way to incentivize Mission Command within your brigade? I can tell you a way to incentivize Mission Command. One way to incentivize Mission Command is by clearly identifying the tasks that must be accomplished and giving a strict timeline for them to be accomplished. Those organizations that meet the timeline and standards are allowed to have time back to train on the tasks that they want to train on. Perhaps have a family day. Put people on leave. Uh, time off. Do PT three times a day. Our, we're only limited by our imagination. But those that do not meet the task and time requirement, well then what do we have to do? We have to remove some authority we have to retrain them, retest them, and then reissue that authority. What happens is those that didn't quite meet the standard are now caught back up to the rest of the organization and we can move forward together. Additionally, those that watch their buddies get incentivized for positive behavior are more likely to follow that behavior in the future. Are you satisfied with where your brigade is at? in terms of mission command, authority, accountability, leader development? I'm 
I'm satisfied that we're on the way. We're on the right track. Are we there yet? Absolutely not. I, I will continue to focus on this uh, until the day I change command. This is so important that we get this right. But this is hard business. This takes an entire organization, 4,500 people moving in the same direction, okay, getting better every day and much better by the time this is over. But I am confident that this will enable our success on any battlefield that the United States puts us on. Is there anything else you want our viewers or listeners to know about Mission Command? Any parting words, sir? Hey, every day I ask myself the same question on my way home. Did I happen to command today or did command happen to me? And on my best weeks, I'm 80-20. 80% of the time, I accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. 20% of the time, I get caught up in an event or uh, other instance that I wasn't anticipating. I would ask that everyone out there, particularly my company commanders if you're listening, measure your performance every day. Make sure that you understand where you are as an organization and keep on that azimuth towards mission command and mission accomplishment.